Welcome to Midwest Sports Net. Hi, I'm Joey McWilliams. Joining me on the summit today is Nick Bobeck, the University of Central Oklahoma head football coach in his 10th season with the program. Coach, thank you again for, for coming on with me. It's always great to get to visit with you and talk Bronco football. You know, you had only one game throughout all of 2020, 2021. Obviously, you know, all the, the issues from the fall. Uh, got one contest in, in the spring, and, and that was an interesting one there. Rallied to get a win against Southern Nazarene, an in-state rival, a team that I'd never really seen on the field before, a 30-26 to 26 win. But your quote after the game said, you looked like a team that hadn't played in 500 days. Uh, talk about what your team was like in the spring and, and how does that carry over? Yeah, it, it was it was a fun opportunity. You know, we didn't we didn't treat it like a game. It doesn't go down as a win or a loss or, um, you know, the biggest thing that we wanted to do with that. It, it was it was a good opportunity for us to get live reps against somebody else. The NCAA allowed us to do that where normally they do not allow it. Um, you know, it wasn't anything where we kept stats or, or anything like that, that, that we're going to be, that we're going to be kept. So, um, it was, it was really good. We enjoyed it. Um, the guys over there at, at Southern NAS, they did a good job as well. And I think that, that both sides handled it well, but you know, what, you know, what I said after the game was very much true is that this game is a game that has to be practiced yeah. and, uh, the, the game intensity, whether it's, whether whether you're calling it a game or you're calling it a scrimmage, anytime you work against other people, the intensity is at a different level. And uh, I think that it showed and there was pieces of it where we were going into, you know, that would have been our 12th practice of the spring. And uh, so there was some sloppiness, but there, I mean, it is what it is. We, we got to see our kids in a live atmosphere, um, you know, against against another opponent that was that was working obviously to, to, to beat us. We got to work on substitutions. Uh, I've got a, I've got a lot of new coaches on staff. So coaches needed work as well, not just the players. Um, so we got an opportunity to be able to work together as a, as a staff and kind of understand the ins and outs of what we're doing, um, how we're doing it and what's the most efficient way. If there were things that needed to change that, uh, that we did on game day. So that was good. Got to work all special teams and, and see what we're doing uh, from a basic level, um, you know, the, to go out there and go execute it. So it was a deal where we didn't even game plan it. We went in and we we worked through the we worked through the game, and uh, we were going to run our base stuff. and And we we had one call on the defensive side of the ball the entire day, and <laughs> uh, but we just wanted our guys to go out there and play football. And um, obviously, when it you know the you know, when you're playing five quarterbacks on the offensive side of the football, we played every kid that we have and every, every kid on our roster got reps that day. So it was fun. We, we enjoyed it. Um, I was proud of our kids for fighting. When you come, when you, when you get into a game, you want to win the game. I mean, it's, yeah. um, you know, whether you're calling it a scrimmage or whether it counts or not, it's still, you know, you get competitive and, um, kids wanted to go win the football game, so and they and they found a way to do it. They cleaned some stuff up towards the end of the game and um, found a way to run the football and created some explosive plays. So it was fun. I appreciate what you said there too. You know, experience really can't be replicated within a program for players or coaches as well. So I, I'm sure you, you not only appreciated that, but your coaches appreciated that. You mentioned using five quarterbacks. It's not something you hear very often, exhibition or not. Uh, it, it's a it's a neat take on that, but it should make for an interesting camp too. Uh, it, it looks like there are opportunities then for lots of players to step up on the offensive side of the ball, specifically. Yeah, we're, we we've got a talented football team. I mean, we've 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 put together a pretty talented roster. Probably, um, it's a little bit more inexperienced, but it's probably the most talented roster we've had since I've been here. Um, there's a little bit more depth and creates competition. So. Um, what we've told our guys is, especially like going into that game, because I'm coaching the quarterbacks, is that, you know, you're going to get two series. And uh, those two series, you got to make them count. Um, you know, the uh, the first series, we, we went out and, and uh, moved the football relatively well and, um, and then ended up having to, I think we had a drop ball or something like that on third down. And then we had to, so we had to punt. And then uh, I believe the second series, we come out first play of the series, um, throw a little ball out to the about out to the flat, and we fumble the ball. You know, just some early stuff, and you know, so that was that was that quarterback's day, and uh, so he was done. You know, for that day, so it is it, the way we lined it up. Um, you know, through the 
you know, through the through the practices moving forward. That's what we told them we were going to do. We didn't care what the score was. That's what we were going to. That's how we were going to operate. So, uh, kids did a good job. But we've got depth at, at at a lot of our positions, at most of the positions throughout our football team. There's a couple, you know, some inexperienced kids that we we do have within our program, but um, very talented. We just we just got to develop those guys through fall camp. Um, as well and, and be able to be able to put a polished product on the field when we play Missouri Western. We're speaking now with Nick Bobek, the head football coach of the University of Central Oklahoma in his 10th season at his alma mater. And I would also give a shout out to a friend of the program here for a long time as uh, I've had the opportunity since OklahomaSports.net, which uh, is where Midwest Sports.net originated, our first state website. And Coach Bobek has, has been coming on with me for 10 years. I'm so thankful to get to visit with you again today. And both of us have been around now for 10 years, too. So I think there's a lot to be said for that. You know, speaking of Oklahoma, by the way, you had signing day uh, recently, back in the spring, National Signing Day. You signed 34 players to the program and I, I, by the way, I like what you say about about signing day. And, and you mentioned just a moment ago that recruiting is creating competition within the program. Your signing day was a little bit interesting, though. Thirty four players that uh, you were able to uh, put on paper, all of them with from signing from within the state of Oklahoma. And, and it seems to be maybe just a little bit of anomaly. But you know, you talked about the fact that you addressed issues at, really at every position. It's a uh... We've been we've been in that model now um, for for the last several years. We've been in, we've been the mo- in, been, been within the model. I apologize of signing only Oklahoma high school kids and only recruiting Oklahoma high school kids for about three years. Now we've signed a you know a specialist from out of state or whatever it may be in the last couple of years, and then we'll bring in um, anybody that's going to come in um, from out of state is going to be a transfer kid, and they need to be ready to play now because our our model. You know, it's, it's we're not we're not a lot different than a lot of other you know schools. You know, whether they be in the state of Oklahoma or somewhere else, is that budgets aren't getting any better. You know, so how do we how do we do a better job of stretching the dollar and, and putting ourselves in a good situation? And you know, we believe with the facilities that have been built here in the last several years here at UCO, and you know the the campus and the environment that we have to recruit to that we we should be able to win the state of Oklahoma on the kids that we need and that's just the way that we feel about it uh, right wrong or indifferent but um, you know we we believe that that's a that's a priority for us is is to bring in the best Oklahoma kids that we can find um, and then be able to develop them over the course of time that's going to be able to create that competition and you know, our, our level is so much about development. Um, it's you're not you're not oftentimes um, getting kids that are ready to play right away. You know, it takes time, it takes development, and that's OK. You know, but you're, you're going to every year have a few kids that are going to come in and play as true freshmen. But for the most part, you're looking at guys that you want to bring in in red shirt and let them develop, get them in the weight room. A lot of small town kids you're, you're finding on our roster. Um, that are going to develop over the course of their time in our in our program. So we want to grow them up. That's that's the thing that we that we talk about a great deal within our program. We're going to invest in them uh, beyond just the football field. We're going to invest in them in the classroom. We're going to invest in them as men. And um, you know that's the that's what we want coming out of our program. We want better husbands, fathers, uh, men coming out of our football program. And that only happens with time. No different than invest, investing money. You've got to invest in people, and uh, that takes time. It's not a it's not a turnstile st- type approach. Well, coach, there have been some some small town kids that have made some big time names for themselves through your program over the years, and I know that is a big part of the b- development process that you spoke about. We talk about defense. I know that defense is important to you. Uh, what kind of adjustments are you making heading in now to the the twenty twenty one schedule and you, you know, you've, you've had some opportunity, you had plenty of opportunities to look at film and, and uh, see these kids coming in. Yeah. You know, it's a, I think our roster is, is more talented this year on the defensive side of the ball than, it, than it's been. Um, you know, our, uh, our former defensive coordinator, Russ Pickett, you know, retired from football. And so we've had, uh, we've got a new defensive coordinator. His name is Dustin Landry. And I'm, I'm really excited about, about what he's brought uh, to our, to our program. And, 
Um, you know, we, we, we concentrate very much. He, he aligns with what I want to do from a, from, from a philosophical standpoint in that he believes in development and keeping things simple and allowing kids to go play fast. And, um, you know, I think that we've, we've recruited at a high level on the defensive side of the ball. And I think it'll be, it's going to be a fun year to watch those kids go fly around. Well, it should, and it gets underway, by the way, not that far from now. I mean, September's right around the corner. It's amazing how quickly this is going to get here, and I know, Coach, you're, you're probably ready for it, but glad to still have some time between now and then. It's an all-MIAA schedule, as as it has been for a number of years. You open up on a Thursday night, that's September 2nd, and you're going to do so at home against Missouri Western, and then on the road next the next week against Emporia State. I, I talk about that Missouri Western matchup. That should be a fun one any way around. Of course, you know, having fans back in Wantlam Stadium is going to be great for everyone uh, and to get to watch to, to watch your program. But uh, the Griffins and the Broncos have played some tight contests. That one score games the last three years. You're three and five against Missouri Western in, in the eight years in being in the MIAA. But it's just been back and forth. Oh, and by the way, the home team's won seven of eight times in those matchups. So good news for you guys, you're playing at home. <laughs> That's yes, a positive there, but it should be a, a fun one any way around. That's what, how your schedule opens up. Talk about 21. No, I think that, uh, you know, our schedule, I believe, you know, we, having an all conference schedule is really difficult. Um, you know, it's a, it's, it's something that it's a model that, that the MIAA has decided to go with and which, and which understandably so, because you're not looking for out of, out of conference games and, and so forth. Your schedule is lined up every year. Um, you know, so that it's, it's, but it's also a difficult, it's a difficult road to hoe. And, uh, you know, since we've been in the conference, you know, it's, it's, we've been one of the few teams that have kind of built within the conference and been able to sustain some success within the conference. And we've had the opportunity and been blessed enough to, to have good enough players to have beaten everybody in the conference now uh, at least once. And, and the thing that the thing that's difficult is you've got to be ready to play week in and week out. And, and it goes back to kind of the recruiting model as well, is that if you don't have enough depth and enough competition within your football program, it's really difficult to win in this conference because week in and week out, you're playing very stiff competition and the competition within, within, uh, within the MIAA obviously is, you know, you're, you, you've got, you've got a lot of guys that are in the upper tier. There's very few that are, uh, that are, that are in the bottom half. So I believe that the, that the schedule really works out well for us. We start with tough competition, obviously. And, uh, but, but, the thing is, is that you kind of get some some situations in there, whether you catch people at home or, uh, you know, the the road trips are not stacked up against you uh, with with multiple long road trips back to back. And so I think our, our schedule lines up pretty good to where if we can get started well, uh, I think that we've got a we've got a chance to string some stuff together. And I feel good about our football team. And it, but it always comes back to building confidence and kids feeling good about what they're doing and. Um, if we can if we can get started fast, I feel really good about what we're doing. Well, you have that opportunity again, getting underway on a Thursday night, that first Thursday in September, September the second, Missouri Western coming to Edmond to Wantland Stadium to take on the Central Oklahoma Broncos. Coach Nick Bobeck, as always, thank you very much for uh, giving some of your time today. It's always appreciated. It's a privilege to get to visit with you. I think you do a great job, and uh, we're just always thankful to get to have you on the show. Success to you and to the Broncos this season, and thank you for taking time with us here on the Summit. Joey, I appreciate it, and thank you for your investment in, in Oklahoma Collegiate Athletics and also the, the high school athletics within the state as well. And we, uh, you're, you're definitely a blessing to us and some getting some exposure for our kids and our program. So we appreciate you very much. Thank you, sir.